As Lucy glided through the door, her feet touched a rush of cool water. The door closed behind her. She looked up and saw big mountains surrounding her. She was standing in a fast-flowing river and she could feel the hot sun on her skin. She knew exactly where she was, and it was always her favorite place in the world. She was near her grandparents' ranch in Mexico. This was the very spot where she and her siblings used to play when they were children. They would spend all day long swimming in the river, playing in the mud, and running around barefoot all over the ranch. They would eat fruits off the trees and wild berries from the bushes, and they would explore the land all around them. Their imaginations were their only limits. Lucy always felt extreme comfort from this land, and she felt like there was something very magical and mysterious about this place. It was her place of peace. The summers they spent here were some of her best memories. Even though her grandparents were strict, she knew they loved her. She liked being somewhere she and her siblings weren't slapped around, talked down to, and treated like the lowest of the low on earth. This place was heaven to her. She took in the smell of the wildflowers and vegetation around her. The warm wind was a comfort as it flowed through her long hair. She closed her eyes and she was taken back to her childhood memories. It had been about four years since she had last been here. Her grandparents had died two months apart. They had been married for 53 years and they were buried under their favorite mesquite tree. The massive tree was estimated to be more than 200 years old. Lucy loved it too. And again, she thought there was something great and mysterious about it. When she opened her eyes, she saw a figure standing on the other side of the river. It was Jesus himself, and he was waving to her. She ran across the shallow end of the river as quickly as she could to reach him. He met her a few steps in the river himself. She embraced him with a full-blown tackle of a hug. He caught her in his powerful embrace and held her for a few seconds. I've longed to see you, my daughter. I've missed you, Jesus said with a warm smile. Lucy was caught off guard and she stopped and looked up at him. Her heart had longed his presence again. You missed me, my lord, she said, surprised. Of course I did, Lucy, Jesus said warmly. I long to be in all my children's presence. I long for all of your company. He stopped and looked around, closed his eyes and felt the warmth. He looked down at his feet in the river. This water feels really good, he said, smiling. I've always loved it here, Lucy said as she looked around too. I know you have, my daughter. That's why I brought you here. Why did you bring me here, Lord? asked Lucy. Because I want you to talk to me and to trust me. Tell me what's on your mind. I am here to answer your questions, Jesus said lovingly. They started to walk down the riverbank and head toward a favorite hill she liked to climb as a girl. You could see most of the ranch from atop of that hill. She thought long and hard for several minutes. Jesus walked alongside her. He was quiet while she pondered her thoughts. Why do my parents hate me? She finally said out loud, tears welling up in her eyes. I could take this slabbing around, but my brothers and sisters were innocent. They didn't deserve it. My mom never stuck up for us. She just watched quietly in her little world. The more my father drank, the more he took it out on us. Going off to college was the best thing that ever happened to me. But they're still there. They have to endure it without me. I guess my question is simply, why? You were always strong, Lucy. Jesus said with kind eyes. You are also compassionate, loving, and nurturing, and you have the spirit of a champion. You've always fought to know the truth. You've put others first before yourself, and you've sacrificed yourself for your siblings. You are quick to forgive your mother and father, and you would always encourage your siblings to keep loving them. This you got from me. You always knew I was there, even though you didn't understand it. Even when you questioned my father's existence, you knew deep down I was there. Lucy looked long and hard at him, dissecting every word he spoke to her. I didn't want to believe, she said honestly. 
I was a little angry and bitter with you. I thought surely life didn't have to be so hard and cruel. I searched long and hard trying to disprove your existence, but the more I searched, the more you made yourself known. That is true wisdom among the wisest on earth, said Jesus. Your conclusions were correct to say that the universe could not be held together without the Father. But you are only scratching the surface. God's majesty and mysteries are infinite. Mankind was never meant to understand it. People get smart and think they can outsmart their creator. Deep down, though, they all know the same thing. They just choose not to accept it. They would rather spend an eternity in pride than accept the truth and give themselves to a higher power. Proverbs 25.2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. They made it to the top of the hill, and they both looked over the landscape of the ranch. Lucy looked up at Jesus, and he seemed deep in thought, sad even, thinking about his last statement. I love my people, Lucy, just as much as I love you. I sacrificed myself for all of you. It grieves me deeply when people reject me and serve only themselves, Jesus said, tears forming in his eyes. Let me answer your first question, Lucy. Your parents love you. They just don't know how to show it. You didn't deserve the beatings either. Your father has opened a big door in his life by a generational curse which he will not break free from. Alcohol is his fleshly comfort and curse. Your mother's is fear. She stays out of the way because she is under a generational curse as well. She didn't get involved when you and your siblings were slapped around because she was taught to completely submit to her husband no matter what. She chose to stay out of it or risk being punished more severely than all of you. But why? asked Lucy. How do I stop it? Through me, Jesus said simply. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You will show them who I am. But how, she asked. By trusting me. Be yourself and they will see me in you. You will deliver them from this bondage and set them free in my name. I've searched their hearts and they long to know me, said Jesus. But they are so worldly, my Lord. How can I reach them by trying to explain you to them? She asked, curious. Faith, he said simply. Let me show you something. He placed his hand on her forehead, and instantly she was taken to a land that was far away in time. It was as if she was there. She could see, smell, hear, and feel everything around her. There was a woman in front of her. She was walking slowly and looking around nervously to make sure she wasn't being followed. She was slightly out of breath, as if she'd traveled far. She carried a small purse on her side. She hurriedly opened it to check the contents. The woman had many plain beige rags and a loaf of bread. The woman was wearing all black. The land was rocky with bushes and trees that looked like they belonged in the desert. Lucy recognized this place as Israel. She was in the past. She kept following the woman. After about 15 minutes or so, the woman stopped and sat down on a large rock by a small river. Lucy looked ahead and saw a large, noisy crowd up ahead. It looked like a mob scene. It was a giant circle surrounding a man. They moved as he moved. Many were coming from all directions, running toward him, not wanting to miss a thing. The woman began to weep terribly. I am so terrified, Lord, said the woman. I know that I could be killed for this, but surely you have something better for me. I've tried everything. I'm so tired of the constant bleeding, so weary. I've suffered this for 12 long years. I know this man is my last hope. Surely he is your son. If I can just touch his clothes, I know I will be healed. If I can just reach him. She got up, and with an urgent and newfound purpose and energy, she moved very quickly toward the mob. Lucy had to jog to keep up with her. She went straight towards the back of the mob and slowly made her way towards it. She received several dirty looks from some of the people there. 
she sneaked into the very back of the crowd and tried to squeeze through. One man saw her there, grabbed her, and pushed her down. You don't belong here, woman, said the man. The mob was moving very slowly now, and when the man turned back toward the scene, she crawled back through on her hands and knees to the back of the crowd again and worked her way to the middle. The man she was trying to reach was in front of her now, walking a slow and steady pace. With one last effort, she reached and barely touched the back of his cloak. She fell on her face as she reached out. She felt a quick, warm, and surging energy move rapidly through her body. It gave her goosebumps, and she automatically felt healed. She felt the blood flow stop. She smiled, but then she saw the man in front stop. He turned around. Lucy saw that it was Jesus himself, but he didn't have the holes in his hands and feet. Who touched my clothes? asked Jesus. Some men who were walking beside him, almost acting like bodyguards, looked at him funny and said, What do you mean who touched your clothes, Lord? There are people all around you touching you. Jesus kept looking around. The woman saw this and fear seized her heart. She ran up to his feet and started bitterly crying and shaking. My Lord, it was I who touched you. I've suffered for twelve long years and I'm so tired to the point of death. I knew even if I just touched your clothes, I would be healed, and I felt the healing hit my body. Please have mercy on me, my Lord, she said, bowing with her face in the dirt. Jesus smiled and crouched down to her. He gently cupped her face with his hand so that she could make eye contact with him. He smiled a loving smile at her, and she couldn't help but smile back at him. He said gently and lovingly to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. He stood up and continued walking toward his destination. Several minutes passed and the crowd was further away now. The woman was still there on the ground, looking toward the healer. Lucy got down with her and just looked in her eyes. The woman was just smiling and tears were pouring out of her eyes. She was even giggling as she was watching. Lucy had just witnessed mercy and love at a level she had never seen before. Soon after that, she was back at her grandparents' ranch, looking at the same smile she had seen in her vision. Faith is what makes people well, said Jesus. Trust me and have faith in me, and you will do the same, not only for your parents, but for many of my people. I am the good shepherd. All who run to me will feel their chains of bondage broken. Lucy, bring my people to me. The time is near. I give you the authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, clean the diseased, and cast out demons. I believe in you, my lord, said Lucy, now more than ever. A door now formed down below the hill by the large mesquite tree where Lucy's grandparents were buried. They started making their way toward it, and Lucy knew this wonderful time together was coming to an end, at least for now. When they reached the door, Lucy looked at the two crosses by the tree. She began to cry again and looked up to Jesus smiling at her. They are with me, he said simply as if he was reading her mind, and someday you will be with them again. She was so happy to hear that they were with Jesus. She gave him one last warm embrace and kissed his hands. My Lord, Lucy said hesitantly, I know that this seems redundant given all you've done for me and my family, but thank you. Jesus smiled broadly and said, Daughter, there's something that I want to tell you that I've shared with the others.